Hello everyone. In the next uh, 12 minutes, I want to take you through amenorrhea. This is not a small task, um, but let's start. Um, amenorrhea, um, by definition, is absence of menses for three months in somebody that has been having regular menses and um, also, it's defined as absence of menses for six months in somebody that has been having um, irregular menses. So that's how amenorrhea is defined. It can be primary and it can be secondary. So secondary means that uh, this woman has been having uh, menses and then the menses stop for three to six uh, months as defined above. And then primary means... Um, this is a young girl that has uh, failed to attend um, Menak. So it's called primary when um, she's reached 16 years old and she's failed to have her first bleed. Or she's reached 14 years, she's failed to have her first bleed, and she also does not have secondary sexual characteristics. We know the first secondary sexual characteristics to arise her, um, her breasts, so the breasts haven't come up and um, she also can bleed. So we make that diagnosis of primary amenorrhea at 14 years when we don't see any secondary sexual characteristics. So uh, from that we know that amenorrhea can be pathological or it can be physiological. So we know it's physiological in several um, states. A pregnancy um, is a state where... Um, Amenorrhea is normal or physiological. Uh, when a girl has not uh, attended Menak, um, we say, of course, um, amenorrhea in that case is physiological. When a woman is menopausal, we know that um, that state is uh, physiological. And also when she's breastfeeding, we know that um, amenorrhea is um, physiological in that uh, situation. So, there's also pathological uh, amenorrhea, meaning that there's a problem why uh, the amenorrhea is there. So the problems can arise from problems in the hypothalamus, problems in the pituitary gland, problems in the ovary, what is otherwise called the hypothalamopituitary ovarian axis. Sometimes it's problems in the adrenal glands. So what problems in the hypothalamus can cause um, amenorrhea. So it's really stress of any kind, uh, social stress, uh, being underweight, being overweight, um, being involved in strenuous uh, sport, um, being um, in a state of dieting, in a state of starvation, being chronically ill. Um, even a change of environment can cause um amenorrhea. Uh, sometimes there are more serious things causing amenorrhea like uh, craniopharyngiomas, that's tumors in the, in the hypothalamus. Um, and also there's some problems uh, women can be born with um, like Kalman syndrome. In this, uh, in this uh, condition, um, a girl has some neurons that don't develop in the hypothalamus and also uh, those neurons that uh, in the olfactory bulbs also don't develop. So this uh, girl will present with lack of menses, that is primary amenorrhea, and they also present with a um, lack of smell. So when those two things are present, you have to suspect um, uh, Kalman syndrome. So um, like said, Secondary amenorrhea can also be due to pituitary um, uh, gland problems. So somebody has a malfunctioning pituitary gland, maybe because there's an adenoma there, there's a tumor there that has destroyed the um, glands that produce FSH, that's follicle-stimulating hormone, destroyed the glands that produce um, luteinizing hormone. And um, that is possible. Sometimes there's an adenoma or a tumor that is producing uh, 
prolactin, what is otherwise called a prolactinoma, and therefore that is suppressing um, a production of uh, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone leading to lack of menses. Then there's a condition called Sheehan syndrome. Sheehan syndrome is a um, condition where there is a pituitary necrosis. Pituitary necrosis arises because um, a woman has had postpartum hemorrhage, she's bled, there's reduced perfusion uh, of blood to the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland dies. So because of that, um, she presents with amenorrhea, she presents uh, with uh, difficulty um, breastfeeding as well because uh, uh, prolactin is also not um, being produced as it is produced in the pituitary gland as well. Um, amenorrhea can also be ovarian in origin. So you can have what is called um, premature menopause, which is um, the ovarian uh, tissue or the ovary shutting down before the age of 40. There's also what is called early menopause when the ovarian um, uh, tissue or ovarian function ceases by the age of um, uh, 45. Um, so that's one ovarian cause that can be due to many factors. Um, it can also be just, um, you know, somebody who has radiation given on them, chemotherapy administered to them and their ovary just uh, stops functioning and then they have amenorrhea. We have um, ovarian dysfunction from post cystic ovarian disease. Uh, sometimes a woman might have no ovaries at all. Uh, an example here is... Um, Turner syndrome, where a woman whose um, genetics are XO instead of XX, so her ovaries are not well developed, they are streak gonads as they are usually described, and therefore she doesn't produce any uh, estrogen, and therefore she will not produce any uh, menses after that. Sometimes you are dealing with a man who looks like a, like a female, like in the case of androgen insensitivity. You have a um, patient whose um, uh, genetics is X, Y. They have testes. They are producing testosterone. Um, they've produced um, all this testosterone, but the tissues are not... Um, their cells are not sensitive to testosterone, so their genitals on the outside will look female. So we think that this is a female when they're actually genetically male and they don't have any ovaries and they don't have any testes and they don't have any uh, uterus. So in that situation called androgen insensitivity, you can have actually a man in front of you, a genetic man that is uh, not... Um, having any ovaries and therefore not having any menses. Then we have drugs, of course, uh, contraception, uh, Dipoprovera, oral contraceptive pills for a long time without a break can uh, cause um, menses to uh, stop as well. So, uh, we also have um, uterine causes of um, amenorrhea. So these include uh, congenital problems like an imperforate hymen. You can classify these as outflow obstruction causes. You have um, situations where um, a woman has no uterus at all, um, like in the um, androgen insensitivity syndrome situation where we have this genetic male, but uh, the external genitalia is um, female and therefore they have no uterus and then they have no menses. Then we have um, Mullerian agenesis syndrome, um, a very rare condition, um, a known cause where a woman has of normal ovarian function, has uh, normal external female genitalia, but um, the uterus has not developed. This is what is called the Maya Rokitansky Kusa Husa syndrome. So I normally call it Mr. KH uh, syndrome because the name is hard to pronounce. You might have um, a woman with uh, cervical stenosis. Sometimes it's post delivery. They have a cervical tear, it's sutured, then it heals and closes, and then the menses um, don't come. Then you have. Um, Women, surprisingly, who come uh, post-hysterectomy um, in our setup, they were not told that there was a hysterectomy or they forget there was a hysterectomy. And then they come that they are not having menses and they want to have a baby. So that is also 
possible for you to try and cause of amenorrhea. Then we have Asherman syndrome. So Asherman syndrome is a condition where um, uh, a woman had maybe an incomplete abortion or they had a suspected um, uh, endometrial cancer. Then they had a D and C or dilatation and curated or maybe an MVA. So they were over curated. Uh, the curating was overdone so that the endometrium was literally removed. So the uterus heals on itself and um, uh, there's lots of scars inside. There's literally no endometrial tissue there and therefore this woman will present with um, amenorrhea. That is what is called um, Asherman's uh, syndrome. Um, so how do we evaluate um, this patient? So the evaluations of patients on uh, with amenorrhea, whether they are um, uh, primary amenorrhea or secondary amenorrhea, is um, is very similar. So you have to take a good history, take all the details, the age of the patient, their stresses, what they are eating. Um, and so on and so forth. You have to go through all the steps, trying to think about hypothalamus problems, trying to think about um, pituitary problems, trying to think about um, ovarian uh, problems, trying to think about uterine problems, because all these causes in all those categories, as you saw, can be um, like congenital or, or acquired uh, problems. So you have to take a very um, thorough history then you have to look at the development of this uh, patient, their developmental staging, especially if you have a primary amenorrhea patient. Then you have to do a pelvic um, exam, look at the genitals, look at the size of the uterus, and you always have to do a pregnancy test. Every woman, even with primary amenorrhea, can be pregnant. Uh, girls have come pregnant even before uh, they are first menses. You have to do an ultrasound because you want to look at is the uterus there or not? Um, what is the size of the uterus? Sometimes you can look at the ovaries. Sometimes you can look at the kidneys, trying to identify all these um, congenital problems that can cause um, uh, amenorrhea. Then uh, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone can be very important because um, if uh, the ovaries are not working, a follicle stimulating hormone will be very high. If the pituitary is not working uh, well, then you'll find that the um, follicle stimulating hormone will be low, luteinizing hormone will be low, estrogen as well will be low. Um, but uh, if it's the pituitary that's not working well, then you'll find that um, gonadotrophin releasing hormone levels will be very high. If it's the hypothalamus that is not uh, functioning, everything is going to be low. Follicle stimulating is going to, uh, stimulating hormone is going to be low. Um, the pituitary hormones, of course, all of them will be low. And also, uh, finally, your ovarian hormones will be low. So you might need to do a karyotyping because you have all those um, uh, examples that we had of a, um, of a male, um, a genetic male with no uterus, um, androgen insensitivity syndrome, for instance, you might need to do a karyotyping and you discover that it was a male. Uh, the craniopharyngioma, sputitary tumors, a CT scan, an MRI of the brain might help as well. So management of these patients really depending on you, uh, depend on us getting a proper history, uh, having all the important investigation done, and getting to the diagnosis. So once we get to the diagnosis, we will manage uh, the specific diagnosis that uh, we have in front of us. So that was my attempt to do uh, amenorrhea uh, for you uh, guys in um, 12 minutes. Thank you so much for listening and see you in the next one.